by EQ. Now, EQ was a character. EQ could have been, probably should have been emperor, wasn't, a whole lot of political fun stuff. He's a fun guy if you ever get a chance to sort of study a little bit of Japanese history. EQ's the one to study. Well, now, EQ, he liked to gather about him other people interested in, in Zen Buddhism and also interested in cultural arts. And what he liked to do is sort of try to find the Zen in sort of cultural practices to sort of spread it out to more people. So you might notice a lot of classical Japanese arts have sort of a Zen, peaceful, meditative quality to them. Brush painting, um, we'll flower arrangement, uh, rock gardens, tea ceremony. All of it is Zen. It all has the same feelings behind it. So he start, um, so Shuku starts studying with EQ and finding Zen and finding the way through tea. Enlightenment through tea. And um, not a bad way to go. It really isn't. So he starts developing the idea of Zen and tea and putting it all together. A little bit later, like the next generation, we get Zen Riku. Now Zen Riku sort of takes all the sort of parties and everything going on, he condenses it into, and the idea of studying Wei and Ti. He puts it all together into one ceremony. There are, you know, different, slightly different... Try any water? I do. <coughs> Try this again. Without the problem. <coughs> there are different... That's actually not the cup. I don't think. I think that's, I grabbed two. Okay, never mind. So you can have that back through. Um, so you took all of the, there are different sort of levels and types of tea ceremony, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a few minutes, but it all has the same sort of movements and base to it. And that all comes from Senriku. Now, the tea ceremony kind of has uh, sort of four aspects that make up what the tea ceremony is. It is the idea of harmony, respect, purity, and tranquility. Those four elements is what makes up the tea ceremony. All right, so that's kind of the history. Um, any questions about sort of the history and tea before I move on to the tea ceremony itself? Specifically what type of tea were they using? Green, green, green. It's green. Um, it's a powdered green tea. So it's not like the dried up leaves that you're familiar with. It's it's powdered. But yes, green. Fresh. It's called matcha. How often are the ceremonies held? Depends on how party or the, the uh, host is. Yeah, it could. It could be once a year if you're if the host that you go to is lazy, and it could be uh, every convention if your host is <laughs> Liazumi. <laughs> It's just a different way of consuming the tea. Um, the difference between white, red, and brown teas are really when you pick what how you, and, and, and what how you, you do process it. So white teas are basically young tea leaves that are more or less unprocessed. Green is mature leaves that get a little bit of processing, but not a whole lot. And black and tea black has the most processing and therefore has the most caffeine and all that fun stuff. And then, like, second question. I'm always curious. Um, we'll, we'll, get we'll, in, we'll explain that. Hold, hold that one. We'll, we'll answer that one specifically. Yes. Yes. It's Always powdered tea. Yep. Matcha. We specially powder order tea. it. And I believe our. Yeah, now, um, <clears throat> that, that is the that is the same as a cup of humanity, or? That's another type of tea. Um, I'm not familiar enough with cup of humanity to uh, answer that. Uh, there was a question back here first. During a ceremony, is there a specific amount of like, there's so many servers for so many customers? One server. One server. So if there's 10 people in the party, yeah. just so She would. The, we'll, and we'll, 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 we'll joke we'll on this too. A bit. But uh, she does all the work, and I'm the one in the party with all the power. Uh, yeah, I was wondering how long does a standard ceremony go? Is as long as I want it to. As long as you want it to. <laughs> yes, to and you. we'll get, we'll, we'll explain we'll, that a little we'll bit We'll talk a little more about that too, but I'm the one with the power, 
and I determine, once the party starts, I determine how long it lasts. All right. Um, Oops. Yeah. It's the damn skirt. It is. Okay, so. It's true. It's certainly not to a cheese here, boy. Maybe you can make your skin fair, don't we? Yeah. All right. We're doing um, the East meets West again. We are. <laughs> We've, we've had a, a few interesting tea ceremonies with conventions, like the last one we did was at a, a steampunk convention. So I had a kimono that I, uh, actually a yukata that I sort of hiked up, had pants, boots, all my gears and everything on it, and did sort of a uh, kimono steampunk. I was doing an English ball gown. <laughs> uh, years ago you did the Raven Claw. Yeah, yeah we did, we've done it, it as, as Harry Claw. Potter once or twice. That was two years ago. Um, Let's see, and yeah. I think that's about all the... No, we, you've done it as um, Sakura once. That was the year you yes. cursed the lack of sleeves. No, that was... Clover? No, that was the uh, Hogwarts year that I cursed okay. the lack of sleeves. You've done it as Sakura once, I think. Might have. In any case. Um, <laughs> so, TC, or ceremony. Okay. Oh, I need to start down here this time, don't I? Uh, it'll be a, a moment to I get to that right. point. Okay. Okay. I'll stay down here. There are two types of tea for tea ceremony. They have slightly different ceremony types, and I'll explain a little bit more. But there is thick tea and thin tea. What we had was thin tea, and those who are up here can tell you that despite being called thin tea, it's still rather strong. Um, it is certainly stronger than the type of green tea you're going to be finding in your local Asian restaurant. It yeah, is strong. Water. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's water, really. Um, it's strong, but thick tea is like syrup. Not kidding, it is like syrup. It is an acquired taste of which I have not acquired. <laughs> which is why we do the thin tea ceremony. No, that's also because it's, it's, it's expensive. I don't know how to get a hold of thick tea. Also, I don't work. I didn't um, study the thick tea ceremony as much as it did, so um, for the obvious reason that I don't like drinking this stuff. <laughs> Why am I going to study it if I don't like drinking it? Because you're the host, you don't actually drink the tea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, does that mean you like to drink thick tea? I'm the one who controls the party, remember? Alright, so, tea ceremonies started so, so getting... So what we do is a thin tea ceremony. Started getting, um... Popular in the 15th, 16th century. Now, the thing about the um, 16th, 17th century, the thing about the 16th century is the 1500s is that it is the middle of sort of the Warring States period and lots of everybody dying all over the place. And so the samurais kind of liked having a moment of peace and tranquility before they might go off and die the next day. And then, of course, um, in 1600, Japan was kind of unified and all the fighting kind of got put to a stop. Th that's the kind of time period most people think about the samurai. And that's the time the samurai were sort of big and in power and Bored. making all their, you know, theories of, you know, what's the way the warrior is. Well, they weren't actually fighting. They weren't doing anything. So they, they had plenty of time to sort of think about things. And tea continued because it was a fabulously art artsy thing to do. And, and they were bored. And, and they were bored. So, yes, we established the boredom part. Yeah. It kind of sucks to have a warrior culture where you're not actually warriors. So, they drank lots of tea and, and sort of philosophized about the way of the warrior, about the way of life, about the way, the way, and so on. So 